Hey everybody, welcome to this Cubase Beginners tutorial. I am John Merritt from born to produce and you guys are going to learn to use Cubase by actually following along and making a track yourselves from nothing right through to the final mix down and master. You can follow along in Cubase Elements, Artist or Pro and you can use any version of Cubase from Cubase 9.5 and upwards. So I'm gonna play a quick sample of the track that you're going to make and then we're gonna get right into it. Well, it's clear I don't know where I'm going, no, oh. and it's clear. So this is gonna be loads of fun and the first four lessons are completely free, which is enough to get you started in Cubase. So let's get on with it. So this is the Steinberg hub that you see when you load up Cubase. And this is where you can choose what projects you want to load or if you want to start with a blank project, which is what we're going to do. And you also have news on the left-hand side, which will tell you some useful info, like when a new update for Cubase is available. So we're gonna to go to prompt for projects location. It should be ticked automatically. And then we're gonna go create empty. So we just have to choose the location for our project. I'm gonna stick mine on the desktop just cause it's nice and easy to get to. You can put yours wherever you want. I'm gonna create a new folder, call it BTP Cubase beginners, and then go into it and just click select folder. So we won't go into sound card or project settings here. The standard settings should be absolutely fine. So this is the project window and this is where you spend like 95% of your time in Cubase, which makes using it actually really simple. At least once you know where everything is, but don't worry, that's what you're going to learn as you progress through the course. So in the middle of the projects window is where you bring in and arrange all of the elements of your tracks, which you'll see in just a second. Around the outside of the window, you have three zones, which you can show or hide by clicking these little buttons up here, which are the hide or show zone buttons. Now we'll be learning more about the zones as we go through, but first of all, I wanna focus on this right-hand zone. So I'm just gonna hide the lower zone for now. So this zone is where you find sort of media to bring into your projects, whether that is the built-in Cubase samples or samples from your computer. In order to understand this better, let's bring in our first bit of media, a kick drum, and you'll start to see what I'm talking about. So in the right hand zone, make sure you're in the media tab. Now Cubase does come with many of its own sample packs, which you can actually get to by clicking loops and samples, and you'll see all the ones that come with Cubase. Now we're gonna use some of these later in the tutorial, but for now we're gonna press the home button, and I'm gonna click on file browser so we can bring in our own samples. So for you guys watching this on YouTube, if you have not yet bought the course, you will find a link to the audio samples needed to complete the first four lessons below in the description. So to find the work files on your computer first, obviously download them. I've just put mine on the desktop here. So to extract the zip, we just double click it. Now I'm using WinRAR on the PC, but this will be the same if you haven't got WinRAR or you're using it on a Mac. And then you'll see the Cubase tutorial there, which is gonna click and drag it out. This has all the work files inside it, so I can close that now. So back in Cubase, remember in the media tab, we're gonna to go to file browser, and then we just need to navigate to wherever we put our work files. Now, for ease of use, I put mine on the desktop, so I'm just gonna expand that. As you can see, I've got the tutorial files here, which include the work files. Let's just expand that, and then go into the work files, and then we've got our audio folder. So click on that. And we've got this strange little problem in Cubase just because I'm on a slightly smaller screen here. So at the moment, it's not showing the files in this particular folder. All we need to do, it's just a little glitch. All we need to do is come up to where our cursor turns into this sort of double headed vertical arrow and just click and then the files will appear. So if you've got the same problem, just do that. So at the moment, when I click a sample, it's not automatically playing. We want it to auto play. So we just need to select I'll highlight this little button down here. And then when we click a sample, it will automatically play and we can hear what it actually sounds like. So as I mentioned, we are gonna start with our kick. So there's a couple of ways we can get this into our project. The first way is you can just click and drag it into your project and just drop it anywhere and Cubase will automatically create an audio track, but we're gonna do it a bit of a different way. We're gonna actually right click the sample and we're gonna click Create Sampler Track. So as you can see, this has created a new track called Kick01, 
and it's opened up the lower zone and it's showing us the sampler control tab as you can see here. So before we go any further at all, I just want to color the track in a bit just because it's this sort of boring gray color. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option on my keyboard and just click the little colored area and it brings up a color palette and we're just going to select a color. Let's just pick yellow for drums for now, just so we can keep everything neat and tidy throughout this project. So the sampler control shows us that the kick sample is loaded into it and we can change that at any time we like just by clicking and dragging in another sample and it will then play the snare. I do want to keep the kick though. So I'm just going to drag the kick back in and replace it. We have a keyboard down the bottom, which if I click it, you can hear it's playing the kick at different pitches. And the important thing to remember here is that when you press the C3, that's this blue highlighted key, the kick will be played at its natural pitch. If you press any other key, it's either going to be pitched down or it's going to be pitched up. So there are quite a few more functions to the sampler control and especially since Cubase 11 we've got these extra bits down here which we'll be looking into in more detail later on but for now let's just get our beat into the project window. So to get it actually playing in the project we need to use MIDI to trigger it. I'm just going to scroll to the beginning of our projects and it's not complicated we just need to hold Alt or Option on a Mac and you'll see that my cursor turns into a little draw tool and I'm just gonna click and draw one sort of block of MIDI. Now, a couple of things here, we're a bit sort of zoomed out at the moment. So let's zoom in a bit to bar five, which is where we want our MIDI segment. If you've put it on a different bar, you can always just drag it to bar five. So we're all starting in the same place. So to zoom in, there's a few different ways. You can use the slider down here. So we can click and drag that to zoom in or we can just hover over it with our mouse wheel and just use that to zoom in or out. Or you can hold Control or Command on a Mac and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out wherever you like. There are other ways, we'll probably talk about those a bit later on. So now we're zoomed in, we can see we have the bar numbers here, so that's bar 5, bar 6, and we want a 4-4 four, four beat, which means we'll have a kick on every single beat in the bar. So what I also want to do is change this up here from bar, we're going to click on that, change it to adapt to zoom and this just gives us more control depending on how far zoomed in or out we are. So okay we've got a blank MIDI segment so in order to add notes to it we need to double click it and you'll see the editor appear in the lower zone. Again you can actually play the sample by pressing the keys on the bottom. Now just first of all I'm just going to turn this kick down so just by clicking the kick in the project window you can see we've got these sort of properties over here one of which is volume so I'm just going to click where the numbers are and just drag that down let's go down to about minus about minus nine is perfect now our kick is a little bit quieter and remember that if we want our kick to play its natural pitch we need to be pressing the c3 key so a couple more things here, I'm just going to zoom in a bit vertically by using this vertical slider over here on the right hand side. So you can see there we're just zooming in a bit to the keys, scroll down a bit. And then again, if I hold Alt or Option on my keyboard, it's going to change my cursor to a draw tool. And I'm just going to draw in four kicks. And you can see as I draw them in, we're actually getting some information showing up here in our MIDI block. So one on each beat. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. There we go, we can see we've got our first kick. Very nice. One thing I will mention, so it's important to set the level of the first item, preferably the kick that you bring into your projects because as you add more and more elements to your projects, the overall volume will get louder and you'll find that the volume of the project gets harder to manage. So just a pro tip, just set the volume of your kick down quite a bit and always use that to then match the volume of any elements that you add to your project. Okay, so this is great, but at the moment it's just sort of playing four beats and then it's carrying on and there's nothing there. So what I want to do is actually set the loop region. So you'll notice as I come up to the top of the timeline, my cursor changes into a draw tool and I'm just going to click and drag it to set the loop region. And then we need to activate the loop. You can do that on the lower transport panel down here and just click the activate cycle button and you'll see it turns purple. And then when I play it, it just loops around. So we actually want to make this a bit longer. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. So I'm holding control or command and using my mouse wheel to scroll out. And what I want to do is get eight bars 
of this kick so we can then make a melody to go over the top. So there's a couple ways of copying something in Cubase. So I can hold the Alt or Option key and you'll get these little scissors tools. But if I click and drag, you'll see that I just basically copy the MIDI segment over. So I can get four of those, but I also can, if I want to highlight, well, any number of them and then hit Control or Command plus D and it will duplicate them in a row as well. So now we've got eight bars. But obviously our loop region is set so it's just looping the first set of bars now i can just drag the loop region to any size that i want but you also can go to where you want the right hand marker hold the alt or option key and then click to set that and you can do the same by holding control or command and then clicking to set the left hand locator just so you know so in lesson three of this course, you will be building on this kick drum pattern and making it into a sort of proper drum beat and learning how to edit in Cubase. But for now, that's good enough that we can start working on the soul of this track, the melody. If this has been helpful to you, please do like and subscribe for more great Cubase tutorials. Thanks for watching guys and girls. We'll see you in the next one.